Peace and welcome to a new Top 10. Today is all about the stage select or level select themes. We will be allowing hubs, they are just interactive stage selections, so they definitely count. Besides that, as long as you can pick more than one stage and there is a theme, they will also count. So with no further delay, let's jump right into the uncanny Top 10 stage select themes. Number 10, Mario 64. Our first up today is a relaxing theme. It starts out simple enough, but the buildup, the payoff, and the overall feel of the track place it in our top 10. Not all Mario games have a stage select, so there wasn't really much competition from within the franchise. However, the competition came from other games, so that ended up pushing this theme all the way down to number 10. It's a smooth theme with not a lot of instruments, there's not even any percussions, but it's a very well done track and it has stood the test of time. Composed and arranged by Koji Kondo, I wonder what Nintendo would have done without this man, because he alone is the composer for a lot of their most well-known games. Number 9, Donkey Kong Country. In at number 9 we have DKC. I'm not sure many people are surprised seeing Donkey Kong Country make a top 10 themes list. It has some of the best music on the Super Nintendo. One thing that may surprise you, however, this track was not composed by David Wise. If you watch the credits, you will see E. Fisher, which stands for Evelyn Fisher, also known as Evelyn Novakovic. She composed multiple themes for the game. David Wise gets a lot of credit, and deservedly so, but let's not forget Mrs. Novakovic. She did a really good job. Her themes blend well with the game, and her themes fit right in with David Wise. Number 8, Parappa the Rapper 2. Another simple beat, but it has a level of uniqueness. It's a music box mixed with some hip-hop style percussions and even a little bit of scratching blended in for good measure. The theme fits perfectly in Parappa the Rapper. It has a hip-hop feel for a hip-hop game. It's a nice little jam and has a cool groove. It's not something you really hear on a gaming soundtrack too much, but that's exactly why I like it. Plus the fact that it's mellow, smooth, and has a clean sound. If you pay attention to the style of theme we usually pick, most of the time the common ground they share is the smooth factor. Number 7, Diddy Kong Racing. Similar to Mario 64, this theme comes from an interactive stage select. This game even has subworlds with more themes to choose from. This theme has quite a few instruments and sounds throughout it, but what really carries the theme is that bass line. It's a 
happy-go-lucky track composed and arranged by the great David Wise, who is no noob to our top tens. He usually qualifies for each list that we make, sometimes multiple entries. He is one of the only composers that we have done an entire top ten dedicated just to his work. He is that good. Number 6. Star Fox on the Super Nintendo So this one was a tough decision. We had people voting for Star Fox 64 and some people voting for the Super Nintendo version. The 64 theme has a darker feel while the SNES theme has a real feel of purpose. That's one reason why we ended up going with the first Star Fox game. Arranged and composed by Hajime Hirasawa, he joined Nintendo in 1990, where he worked on the soundtrack to Star Fox and a few other games. After barely two years, he left Nintendo due to disagreements over the ownership of his music. We all know how Nintendo is when it comes to stuff like that. Hirasawa went on and founded Faith Inc., an IT company that pioneered the ringtone technology for mobile phones. Five, Bionic Commando. In at number five, we have a classic NES game with some great music. However, if I had a choice on which version to listen to, I would have to go with the theme from the PS3, Bionic Commando Rearmed. They took the foundation from the NES and it built on it. They weren't limited by the hardware anymore. Don't get me wrong, I love some chip tunes, but they aren't always the easiest listen. Sometimes I'm in the mood for something easy on the ears. The original composition is by Junko Tamiya. Her work includes a bunch of Capcom games spanning from 1987 to 1990. The remake version was arranged by Simon Vickland who may be best known for his work on the Payday series. Number 4. Columns Unlucky 4 is not your typical level select theme. You just choose which level you want to start on and the difficulty will be set accordingly. Think of a Tetris level select, and you can start on level 50 with the pieces falling faster than they do on level 1. This one was a personal choice of mine, nobody commented it, and nobody in X mentioned it but this one is just my style. I could almost picture this in Final Fantasy IV or even Final Fantasy VI, and that says a lot because this is by Sega, although this particular version does come from the Super Nintendo. Composed by Hikoshi Hashimoto, who has worked on many game soundtracks. His resume is vast and dates from 1989 to 2013, almost 25 years of producing game music. Number 3, Skate or Die.
Skater Die was first released by Electronic Arts on the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and a few other systems with the original composition by Rob Hubbard. However, this theme didn't exist until it was ported to the NES by Konami in 1988. This theme was composed by Koji Murata. His resume is long and you may recognize some of his work. If not from Skater Die, then perhaps Cubert or maybe even Top Gun. After looking through his work, the one that stands out most to me is the Skater Die soundtrack, and more specifically, this stage select theme. Number two, we have DuckTales. So this one is a simple two second loop, but the real reason why this one made our top 10 is because of the remastered version. It takes the same melody, but then it has some progression. You will slowly start to hear more and more instruments until you have the full fledged theme. of this new version did a wonderful job keeping the same feel of the original track and just adding the icing on top. The original composition was arranged and composed by Hiroshige Tonomura. He worked for Capcom from 1988 to 1990. He didn't compose for a ton of games, but this is the same man who produced the legendary moon theme. The remastered version is by Jay Kaufman, who, since the release of this game, has been quite busy as you can see from his resume. Up next, we have some honorable mentions. Before we get to number one, I have a dishonorable mention, Wu-Tang Shaolin Style. Now in a game all about musicians, starring musicians, and you can select from multiple musicians, the stage select theme is silent. There is absolutely no music at all. All you hear is the footsteps of the character. Now if you can't fit any more music on the disc, or ran out of budget, or for whatever reason you have, you could have used the music from the title screen or any other menu in the game. Many games do exactly that. But this game about people who make music has no music for the stage select theme. A very questionable decision by the devs. Our number one selection today, Mega Man 8. The first game in the main series to be released on a CD-based console, and the music in the game reflects that. It's well beyond the bleeps and bloops you can find on the chiptune soundtracks, but it was a close one. It was between this theme and the theme for Mega Man X4 as well as the theme from the very first Mega Man. We ended up going with this one because of how smooth it really is. It's one of those themes that you can't tell us from a game unless you already know it.
proposed by Shusaku Uchiyama, a former Capcom employee whose main body of work includes the aforementioned Mega Man as well as Resident Evil. He later returned to Capcom as a freelance worker when he composed for the Resident Evil 2 remake which came out in 2019. He is known for using synthetic instruments, and this Mega Man 8 stage select is no different. Thanks to everyone who has made it through all of our top 10 so far. We like to take your comments into consideration and listen to every single submission. Our next top 10 will be our top 10 favorite superhero games. Basically anything from Marvel to DC. It's not a video game themed top 10, but we have done a lot of those lately, so we decided to take a break for an episode. Then we will get back to our beloved video game music. Last but not least, can't forget to thank our gold level patrons at Bearsona11 and Quantum X. It's definitely appreciated. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace. Mm -hmm.